Hey everybody, we are talking about Rings of Power from Lord of the Rings on Amazon Prime Series Season 2. And this is episode number four, four yep. called Eldest. Mm -hmm. So for those who do not wish to go into spoilers, this is not the program for you because we're going to go into <laughs> spoilers and we're going to talk about all kinds of themes. But one of my overarching things with this is I'm really enjoying what I see. I'm not steeped in Tolkien lore, even though I was reading last night because we were watching one of the movies and so I was reading up on things. But I'm loving what they've been doing with the series, except I think this is true to this age in the story being really dark. They're going in this almost horror kind of direction. That's a lot for me. That's a lot for me to tolerate. And so I think it's a great series for people who are ready to get into that kind of a genre and get into the horror of <clears throat> the evil awakening from all over. And I just can't fault how they're doing it. I just am not a fan of horror. I mean, do you think there are enough horror elements for me to be justified? Or do you think I'm just somebody who has a very low tolerance for like a lot very of Very low tolerance. Here? I do. I, I mean, really do. I mean, it's, it's, it's in keeping with the, you know, all the other movies. Um, it's just, it's just, it's just more, rings. yeah, 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 yeah. In the, they all, they all, they all have that aspect to them. Um, it's just this, this episode especially was just, there was a lot of it. That's that all. was true in other episodes yeah. of this series. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I so, mean, it's just, um. We recently watched some of the Hobbit trilogy right. again, and it's got anxious elements in there. And this is not even like we're talking about this because oh, we're trying to warn viewers. This is literally because I'm about to tap out of a series that has a lot of great themes in it and has good storytelling, good execution. But I'm just thinking it's bordering on horror for me. I'm just like, there, there are elements in the story that Tolkien wrote that they're bringing to life. Mm -hmm. You got the Barrow Whites, they're horrific. You could dress as a Barrow White and scare the mess out of people for Halloween. All right, scary stuff. Wait, you didn't think they were? No, yeah, yeah. I mean, they were... Then why the face? Why am I supposed <laughs> to be the only scaredy cat? Those were scary. I mean, yeah, they're like zombies. They're scary, but they're, you know, they're like slow moving. Ooh, you know, it's like... You were, you I mean, were on they're, edge, they're too. Only scary you were you, on edge. They're only scary because you couldn't kill them at first. You know, it's like, that's that's the scary part. But, <laughs> but yeah, but they themselves... Take them in total. That is right, what I'm right, saying. Right, right, I mean, okay. all right, the, all right. listen, we're talking about what we saw them do yeah, and yeah. what they look like. Sure. So, the so whole, the whole we're saying that everything is just aesthetic. No, I mean, it's how they function in the story. I mean, there's a tree that the stranger was trying to break a branch off of, mm -hmm. and the tree doesn't look scary, but... It certainly was not happy about the stranger trying to break a branch off of it, so it mm. pulled him in. So <clears throat> that right there is what's going on here. There are risks all kinds of places. That sequence is where the stranger gets to meet, well, around the time he just met Tom Bombadil. And I know a lot of people were looking forward to seeing Tom Bombadil brought to life. I think they're not disappointed. And that's probably a nice thing. I keep thinking, at the corner of my eye, I'm almost thinking about what other folks are saying about the series. And some people have their gripes because they are Tolkien purists, and some people have their gripes because they're essentially racist. And I'm thinking about the Tolkien purists a little bit and wondering what they're thinking about this. The racist folks can suck it. So <laughs> don't worry about them at all. But the purists, I'm thinking... I get it because there's a lot of lore there. So you're wondering, well, why does somebody have to bring something else in? But I think you just have to calm it down, even for a series. I mean, the series gives them lots of room, but you still have a lot that you have to fold away so people can follow you in an hour. These episodes are like mini movies, though. I mean, especially mm -hmm. the kickoff to the season. Mm -hmm. I think it was really trying to give you this introduction again and then take you all kinds of places. Yeah. Highlights of this for me, the acting remains really strong. I don't have anybody who's sort of letting other people down. I think people really know what they're supposed to be doing with these characters and with the tone of this overall place that they are in the story. I really enjoyed seeing, and we talked about this, the different um, 
versions of the halflings, the Harfoots, mm. who later become the hobbits. They're meeting folks in the desert who are like themselves, but they call them the stores. The... Yeah, and there's some beautiful language about home and what it is to want a home and what do you consider a home. And we were talking about that more. So the writing is getting into these big issues for people in conflict and people being in stressed, seriously conflicted places. What does it mean to feel that you belong, but you don't belong there? Like this is where you are, but this is not an easy home. And you would love to be hearing of a paradise someplace else. So that was very touching. And this is where we have the halflings still separated from the strangers. Strangers met Tom Bombadil. The elves are also interesting. We had talked about the acting with the elves and whether or not we are, because the elves are of a certain type of temperament generally, I guess. Mm -hmm. We had talked about this in previous episode, I think. We were saying, are we warming up to any of the elves? I love Elrond. And mm -hmm. I also love the half, is it maybe a half elf? I'm not sure if he's a half elf. Anyway, the elf who is with the uh, people who are the refugees, kind of, and he's um, helping them. Aaron Deer, right. So he might be a full elf. I'm, I'm, anyway, <laughs> trying to keep up with everything. But love him because he has so much action to break into. So there's all kinds of emotion stored behind his performance. So even if he's an elf that's very straightforward, like a lot of elves are very like all about the business, mm -hmm. <laughs> there's still all that fear that he's just tamping down and pain that's just tamping down, but it's still there for us to watch mm -hmm. this great acting. Mwah, thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. So acting highlights, writing highlights of exploring home. For me with the music, we didn't get a huge that injection of music being central. We had a outgoing song that was sort of interesting because it sounded sort of modern and typically I don't think that's what they've been doing here. So that caught my ears, but mm -hmm. it didn't take me out because the story was already over. <laughs> so this was the outgoing credits. And then honestly, you guys, I think I'm going to pack it in in terms of watching this because it's the fall and there are other series and movies that we can get into watching. And I already finished writing my new piece for this year. So as far as like trying to make sure I'm watching certain kinds of things, it's like we can throw things open again because I've already done that. Woo! <laughs> new screenplay for the year. I'm so excited about that. Got that done early. But back to Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power. One of the things with the storytelling centering on Galadriel, I just am not won over by Galadriel. It's not the actress. It's just the nature of her arc is centered on this so hardcore wanting certain things. And then that's how Sauron sort of plays her. She has Sauron plays anyone. And then she's trying to make up for it. Okay, that's a relatable kind of thing. You make a mistake, you want to make up for it, and you really want to dig down. But I just can't warm to Galadriel. And I don't think I'm putting all this pressure on a female character to have to be someone that's easy to like, because I think I can handle some complex sort of badass women out there, like unapologetically just trying to survive. Like we have the wild woman who was with um, Aaron Deer and Isildur oh, among the human refugees. Mm. And uh, she is just saying basically once they discover that she was part of the I guess slave force that had to ally themselves to the wild, wild Ordo, or... to 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 Mordor. They mm -hmm. had to ally themselves to the orcs and all that to survive. She was just like, "Look, what am I supposed to do? What right. am I supposed to do?" Like, I get it. You can be flawed <laughs> and be a woman, and I'm not gonna bust on you. I think the issue for me with Galadriel, though, is, oh, I guess her name was Astrid. We're talking about Astrid. Mm -hmm. I, I totally am enjoying her uh, arc there. That she's been found out. That was gonna be happening, Astrid. That was going to happen because mm -hmm. she has that big fresh wound where she mm -hmm. tried to cover over the mark that signified that she had allied herself to the dark. But it just feels like with Galadriel, with the layers of not super easy for me to like, there's the hero who is amazing in battle. And then there's the person who was vulnerable to Sauron. We all would have been. Sauron was slick. There's just something missing for me there. I just can't dig in and really root. And she's one of our big heroes. And they give her flaws. So she's a mm -hmm. modern hero. We were talking about this. Mm -hmm. 
this is all, maybe she's not flawed enough. I mean, maybe, maybe that's part of it. I don't know, but I'm enjoying Elrond. Elrond being more of a classic, just hero Mm -hmm. over and over again, doing things that we can say we would like people to do in that situation or elves to do or whoever to do. I was just thinking about whether she was flawed enough. Um, I mean, for an elf, she seems pretty flawed. She's struggling. Yeah, when we were yeah, first yeah. introduced to her, right. we're introduced to her when she's younger and she's really trying to tamp down this, I just want this to go this way kind mm-hmm. of spirit. Mm-hmm. Y'all remember the scenes when she's with her brother and then mm-hmm. we revisit that when Sauron's trying to work her mind. <laughs> um. So as I was watching this, I was thinking about uh, humility um, oh, as a spirit- okay. spiritual con- com- concept, um, especially like with Galadriel. <clears throat> she was um, having to really tap into her humility for not being the commander of the, the team and all that stuff. Under um, Elrond, a friend. Right, right. Uh, she's used to you know, commanding armies and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, uh, for, for her, you know, that was an obvious um, one right there. Um, there are yes. lots of smaller um, instances um, throughout, the, throughout the episode of, uh, you know, people having humility. Um, you know, for instance, the stranger, um, you know, uh, different levels of humility also. And just, uh, I mean, the stranger has a lot of humility already. He really does because he's such a lost creature. He doesn't really know until this episode what he's really supposed to be doing in Middle Earth. Right. Um, Yeah, so he just just has a lot of that all the time. Um, Great power, but a lot of humility about it because he's unsure. Yeah, because he's still learning. He's still unsure. Yeah, he wants Tom Bombadil to maybe help him to learn. And Tom is saying, well, if you're worthy, it'll come to you, which I love that message. That's that's beautiful. Right, right. And, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, So, anyway, yeah. So, there were were other little things that I'm I'm forgetting right now. But, yeah, just um, it. uh, that's what the episode brought to mind is uh, humility. And how uh, important that is in life in general, and you know, especially uh, spirituality. Um, yeah, and we saw in the previous episode a lot of humility from the Queen of Numenor, the Queen Regent, because she was having people just come for her, and she kept mm-hmm. being humble and trying to give them room for their grief and their pain, and not just say, "Hey, you're coming for the Queen, get out of here, off with their heads." A lot of humility there. Mm-hmm really worried about the state of things in Numenor, but ultimately if you read Tolkien lore, you know what the state of things is going to ultimately be. So Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's not good for Numenor. Again, I think I'm going to gracefully bow out of watching this series and probably read the recaps because I love the story. And if I wanted to, I could certainly go back and read novels. I'm not, because I'm not writing novels now, that's not my way. What's the smile about? Oh, just your your tolerance for intense uh, scenes is lower than mine. That's true. Excuse mm-hmm. me. So when it comes to spiritual connection, we have it. Oh, there's a great environmental connection in this one. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have the tree people. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so they were really speaking up, and that's who had actually captured one of the – Theo, one of the humans who – in the night had gotten grabbed up by something really big and it turns out it was them and they were just the the tree people were very upset about what had been going on for some time so the orcs are going through and destroying a lot of things including the trees and tree people were not happy about that at all as one might expect i'm trying to get their um oh jim broadbent was voicing one of them it looks like Mm mm-hmm Oh, that's so cool. Olivia Williams. Okay, so they're giving the names of the characters, Snaggleroot and Winterbloom. I didn't know the right term for the tree people, so I don't know if that's the correct way to phrase them, but we get to see them. We get to see Barrow Whites. We get to mm-hmm. see mm-hmm. Tom Bombadil. There's a whole lot of the world being revealed. There's even this creature that Arendir and Isildur and Astrid have to deal with and mm-hmm. <laughs> I love the way Aaron Deer says there are lots of nameless evils that are ancient and far below 
and we don't know what to call this, but we go, oh, this one's supper. That mm -hmm. was really cute because it's like we got through all three together, working together, got through, and we don't know what it is, but it's dead now. We want to eat it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Moving on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's sort of how Aaron Deer has to be because he's not Galadriel commanding these big forces. Right. He's just trying to keep promises to different people and right. Elves, maybe, and trees that he's making these promises to. He's trying to be an honorable person in the sphere that he's operating in. But he wants to go back to Adar. Mm -hmm. He wants to confront Adar again. He wants to try to, you know, take down what he thinks is part of the problem that he thinks he can get to, and he wants to do that. So he's a man on a mission, and we're going to set him back off on the mission. The Harfoots are trying not to get got by the people who are under the dark wizard yeah and they're trying to hunt them down and so these stores who are also halflings are at the end of their sequence in this episode trying to protect them and that that's really cool seeing people stand up to bigger forces and try to protect who they can protect mm -hmm. so a lot of things to recommend a lot of great performances in here for what the material is and i'm enjoying watching the stranger find who he is. Mm -hmm. There was another wizard that came and then that wizard became the dark wizard. And then what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to confront the dark wizard and Sauron. So he knows <laughs> that's on my shoulders, but he sensed that he was super powerful mm -hmm. because of what he's been able to do. And so my guess is he's probably pretty terrified at this point, but also like, well, fair enough, <laughs> because that's why everybody's after me, because I'm supposed yeah. to do that. Yeah. So I have all this power. I'm supposed to do that. At least I know now. Yeah. yeah so now you can get cooking, mm -hmm. try to be worthy of it. So it's a really interesting way for us not to be with your skilled and informed, like Gladriel really knows a lot of things that are going on. And even if Aaron Deer doesn't know so much, he has a lot of years of being in this world. You know what I learned from reading last night? This is supposed to be tens of thousands of years ago on Earth. And the way Tolkien was trying to think about all this mm -hmm. is like the creation myth he had is there's this creation of the universe and this flat Earth and then battles and they get rid of certain parts of it and make a round earth. It's so interesting the way he was trying to conjure all these things. So different stories that people have like, um, spoiler alert, Numenor goes under the sea, like an Atlas kind of, uh, Atlantis, Atlantis, uh -huh. like an Atlantis, uh -huh. sorry, Atlas, yeah. like an Atlantis kind mm -hmm. of a uh, myth. It's like, right. yeah. So he's, so I think Tolkien was trying to right. give Combine. this to be, yeah, a way that the stories that we already have in right. our different, right. um, mythologies Tra yeah traditions mythologies yeah can be explained so this could be woven into mm -hmm. some of that and explain some of those different and weave them together i yeah. thought that was pretty interesting i think with this because this age is so dark this is sauron's rise again mm -hmm. it is just so rough to try to have a telling of this that doesn't feel like a horror or doesn't feel mm -hmm. like it's way too dark. And right. I just think that for my entertainment purposes, I'm gonna have to tap out, but I recommend it to people who have a usual typical adult level of tolerance for action, difficult circumstances. Mm -hmm. Frankly, we fix the face from a distance, gratefully, thankfully, a lot of pretty horrific things going on in the world. Mm -hmm. And so when I go to entertainment, I don't want to escape completely everything, but I can only see so much before it like right. triggers a little bit of like, look, I understand what's going on out in the world. You don't have to mm -hmm. beat me over the head with it. Right, like right. I'm already pretty traumatized and trying to be engaged with the art that I create and the things I support. So yeah, yeah but I, that's why I want people to check it out. I mean, I think these themes are timely and it's well done. Did you enjoy a lot of it? It was a little tense for me to really enjoy a lot of it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was, I mean, it was good. Did I, exactly. Yeah, did I enjoy it? No, for the same reason. Yeah, it was tense. Yeah, people was, are going through the ringer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It sort of, it wasn't, yeah, I wouldn't call it enjoyable. I would call it well done, good, you know. Yeah, so. at this place in the story, it's really grinding these characters down to this tense place where a Galadriel's mm -hmm. captured by Adar. Mm -hmm. And you've got the storers, these halflings, 
trying to stand up to people who work for the dark mm -hmm. wizard and that's probably not going to go in their favor but they're trying to and you're like oh that's going to be a tough fight that they're probably going to lose there's a lot of stuff going on that's tough here and you know a lot more stuff that's tough is coming i'm sort of glad they didn't take me back over to numenor Whoo! i'm just worried about that queen regent and i don't need to see her going through more things i really don't i, I know she's going through more things can we give her a break <laughs> but that's not true i guess to the story so we got to dredge it in there that's one of the things here a dark story mm -hmm. are you gravitating toward a dark story because People are trying to make some sense of it. What can people do in these dark circumstances? Because these heroes are not giving up. They're still standing up. They're still fighting. They're still saying, let's work together. Let's do what we can. Yeah. It's so, a hero story. Yeah. And we're at the place where are there we're any still. Hero stories where it's not dark? We're at the place where we're going through it. We're right, not at right. the place of the triumph ultimately. Right. And this age is just not replete with all these big 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 wins i guess mm -hmm. I, do, I really don't know all that i mean i imagine as soon as you get down into the level of characters day-to-day -day stuff there's lots of little wins you can focus on they're just not trying to give you right they're a focusing, different tone yeah. yeah it's just it's the focus yeah they're the tone the focus is very much on the dark and you know all that stuff yeah but it's not depressing i mean these people are fighting through as you said this is a classic hero story so they're yeah, still fighting but... But there's a lot to fight against. It's, it's sort of wearing on them. It's wearing on me. Well, it's kind of depressing when you think about all the, you know, orcs going through villages and, you know, they just demolish villages and kill lots of people and stuff. And, you know, the... the uh, yeah, but the thing that makes that you have to keep thinking about in the back of your mind is they're trying to make sure that they hunt down Sauron because Sauron tortured them and oppressed them. So, right. yeah, they are doing terrible things to people, but they're trying to get the ultimate one that everybody everyone should want out of middle earth mm -hmm. and if folks could know that <laughs> we wouldn't have all of this right, right destruction right. on that scale but sauron is able to divide and conquer yeah yeah i mean at least at certain places in the story right. when you say it's a classic hero story there are ways to do it there are ways True, to do it yeah. that are more accessible yeah. to sort of making you feel Right. Okay, encouraged. That's and there are true. ways to do it that really puts you in more realistic yeah. settings yeah, really where focusing. things can look really daunting and you mm -hmm. still need to decide just inside, well, if this is how I die, this is how I die, I got to go. I just got to mm -hmm. do this. Mm -hmm. Like, I, It has to be that I stood up like yeah. that orc who tried to kill Sauron mm -hmm. and Sauron just devastated him and killed him. Right. But the orc knew it had to stand up right. and hoped that others would too, but knew it had to do it. And then finally, they all took him out in the previous previous times, you know, earlier than what's yeah. the focus of the timetable in this main story. I think that that's what's sort of tricky with me. If you don't see it as horror, you still do see it as focused on the darkness. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I was just thinking about uh, comparing it to, like, Star Wars, you know, which is another classic hero story, um, good versus evil, and but it doesn't have nearly as much darkness, you know. Uh, as this does you know it's, yeah. it's more focused on you know what people can do to band together right. to resist right, right what people right. can do to find the force within them or right. resist temptations mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. keep coming back to what can we do to help others who are trying to do the same thing right, right. that's what's i think so hard about this is we don't have a safe easy place now if you're looking consistently for people who are choosing really beautiful, wonderful things, go to your Harfoots, go to your Halflings, go mm -hmm. to your Stormers. Right, 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 right. These are folks who are just good, solid, in the face of evil and being smaller than most things out there. They're still just like, no, mm -hmm. <laughs> just quite simply, right. no. And that is amazing strength. And they're just not the elves out there looking flashy with the arrow work that i love i love an elf arrow mm -hmm. battle love it mm -hmm. thank you for those they're not out here with crowns and being kings and the people of numenor have a queen and then these other ones have a king it's not the human hubris of like hey we're gonna stand up like this and i'm on my horse right and i look right. very fancy mm -hmm. because humans are big and halflings are smaller and so they're just going to be quiet in their strength and simple in their strength and just say no and then they pay the price just like the the ones who are puffed up pay the price too 
anyway. I think that for me, this is so inspiring in terms of doing the work you've got to do to pay off any big triumphs or any big hard won victories in another episode doing the work you have to do to stay true to what this age was in the source material. So I am inspired by people being committed to seeing through a dark point in the story and don't cheapen it by trying to give everything a comfortable sheen because that would have taken it out. Don't give me too many comedic notes, too many breaks here and there. But I will say I'm tapping out because of the weight of this thing on the spirit. And I think it's pretty well done if that's earned because that's in the story. Mm. You're moving me. I'm inspired because I really feel these messages going in, but it's just not the kind of tone that I'm looking for yeah. in a lot of uh, my art. But it's taken us two seasons to tap out, you know? And if I learn that uh, the wrap up for the season happens to have more notes of triumph in there for some of the good that I th think of as good, then maybe I'll come back and just watch that. But let us know what you're thinking with this journey here, because look, I read ahead and it's still quite dark, even though I know what's coming. I was just thinking also um, how, you know, Game of Thrones was a game changer as far as uh, TV shows. Um, and I wonder, you know, how this, the, the, the tone of this is probably following that, that, trend you, you have know. to be aware i think of what people have been lauding and what they've been flocking right, to right. so when you're doing an adaptation post game of thrones right. we don't see like a lot of sexed up anything because no, that's no, just no. not in the source material right, right. but you do see violence and mm -hmm, darkness mm -hmm. and we're going straight in there right and it is weighty mm-hmm mm-hmm yeah. yeah, I think you're right. I think that's probably good awareness about externally what drives the creators of this series right, to right. pick a tone, stick the tone. Yeah. I'm not saying that they should change the tone. I think they've got something that works and is consistent with the story they're telling. I'm just mm -hmm. going to tap out myself. Yep, yep. What about you? Are you going to keep on watching it? Uh, maybe, probably, but not. So that's not, probably, yeah. Yeah, but not like. It's not top of my list type of thing. It's not like, because... oh, I can't wait to. For the same reason, you know, I, I, there's just not enough. It's a, it's a little bit too, I don't know. Discouraging? It's, no, it's just so, I mean, you know the overall story. You know, you I know, do. yeah, I mean, it's like. Because we mean, know what well, follows. Well, we, we all, you know, if, if you've seen, if you're a follower of Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit and all that stuff. and Those things follow. They come way after right, right, these right. events. Right. So you know the general thing and you know like Sauron and you know you know what happens. Uh, to some of the big players. We yeah, don't know exactly. what happens with all these smaller players. Right, 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 right. Well, unless you've been reading books and you know about Tom Bombadil or you know about right. some of the players that we haven't seen until now, even though they're not necessarily super small players. Right. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot to learn, you know, about the development of characters and all this stuff and uh, development of different stuff. But, you know, for me, it's just sort of like I know the main gist, you know, bad guy loses, good guys win, a lot of struggle, a lot of war, you know, blah, blah, blah. So it's it's cool to watch, but it's not like, oh, I need to know what's going to happen, you know, because you basically know what's going to happen. It's just how it unfolds. So. You know, I'm like, yeah, it's kind of yeah. cool to, to see that. Um, In this age, they discover the necromancer is is really Sauron. Mm -hmm. I think that's what they discover. Okay. But uh, they already knew that Sauron was back because now we have Galadriel saying that was Sauron and realizing that was Sauron, right? But wait, necromancer, Sauron is the, he's taking the form of that elf thing, right? Yeah, but I think he's spreading evil different places. Okay. He can be like more than one. Isn't he? So, okay, maybe I'm a bit confused, but I, th I thought that one way things were being told was in this age, they had this necromancer and they didn't know there were whispers, so they were going to go figure mm -hmm. out, and mm -hmm. then they learned that is Sauron. Okay. Like, but no, okay, so in this one, it's looking like it's sort of Suramon looking. Like, he looks like Suramon. Okay. One of the other Ishtari, one of the uh, wizards, sort of like Gandalf's a wizard. Uh -huh, and uh -huh. 
uh, Radagast is a wizard from okay. the um, movies and, mm -hmm. and, and this lore. Mm -hmm. um, getting a little confused, I think, about what the, the dark wizard, who that's supposed to be, the necromancer that mm -hmm. we're seeing. That we're seeing the, him. The, we're the, seeing him embodied, this dark wizard. Is he the same as the necromancer? Oh, so maybe I'm just getting confused. Okay, so probably I'm getting a little bit confused about, like, the movies that we watched more recently because we did watch right, movies. Right, 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 right. So probably I'm just confused about that. Okay. So yeah, I think I just blooped and brought in something from the movie <laughs> we were watching last night. Sorry. So yeah, we've got this dark wizard here. Right. So bloop, forget about Necromancer. Bloop, bloop. Well, Necromancer is in this, isn't it? That's what we were getting confused about. So but forget think... forget about okay. that. Okay. Because the dark wizard is who is commanding these folks to go and track down the stranger and track down. Oh no, you're right. The, yeah, that was, from, that was from the Hobbit. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, so yeah, I, okay, I, 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 I brought that in. Sorry. That's right. Because right, right. we were watching different things right, right, in right, the right. story. Like right. that's in the third age. This is the second right, age, right, right, right. and we got different things. But we don't have the ultimate bad guy go down in this age. So we say bad guy, you know, loses. Good guy wins. Like maybe the right, right. dark wizard that's in the east. Maybe they do something to like push him to the side for a while in this age. In other mm -hmm. words, there's a lot of negative stuff that happens in this age. So yeah, it's going to yeah, be yeah. really yeah. hard for you to say, ultimately, the good guys win. Like, some of them survive to have descendants. Right. But I think in terms of fighting the ultimate big bad, mm -hmm. I don't know that in this age that they have a big triumph. Okay, okay. I see what you're saying. But yeah, I'm not... Um, uh, yeah, I'm not eager to see the next episode I'll pro i probably will watch it you know but isn't uh, this interesting though because we go to these stories for something for adventure stories and fantasy stories we want to grapple with things that pull us and remind us of the larger things that we struggle with as humans in the real world it's doing that and then we want to go and we want to see people really grapple we don't want just that sheen of oh no one can really be hurt and oh it's all you know movie rules or what no elves are dying powerful mm -hmm. good forces are going down yeah so the stakes, you know, are heightened and, you know, we're not into this place of, okay, we don't have to really feel that characters we're invested in are not in threat. They are. So this is done really well in terms of for adults to watch this and be pulled into something like this. But it's too much for this adult to find this kind of let's have that triumph of good that mm -hmm. I'm going for an encouraging kind of story. It just may be the wrong age to get that kind of a thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right. So there are these battles that are going to be coming and ultimately some things will be squished down and some things will be handled and settled, but other bigger things are to come back up in the third age as we've been watching, we've been watching parts of. Yeah. So maybe it's just not a good age for me. <laughs> I'm going to have to tap out because it's done well. Yeah. So I think we covered what we were inspired by in terms of the acting, writing, a little bit of music, connection to environment, connection to spirituality. I'm humble enough to say this piece is done well, but it's just not for me and everything doesn't have to be. Y'all should check it out. <laughs> so we're going to be probably pivoting to if we can find something that we both really want to get into and be inspired by another piece, recommend something, if you will. We're open to all kinds of genres. Have a low tolerance for a lot of uh, horror, as you can hear. And you might watch this and think, this was not horror, Cheryl. So don't recommend anything that's horror for us to watch. But uh, go ahead and like and subscribe and check out our other conversations about the earlier episodes of Rings of Power. Y'all take care. Uh, you ever have one of those moments? Right there, one of those moments. When you realize something, hey now, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you really need to shake, mm -hmm. need to shake uh -huh. things up. Bye-bye.